These are the bullet points I'm going to tell you. The U.S. and Russia have been allies since forever, since the beginning of this country and before. Neither they nor China are threats. What they represent are rivalries. It's rivalries. Rivalries for the world island, which is Eurasia, uh, and its connection to Africa, which makes it an even bigger world island because there's a land bridge that goes through Israel. No president, <coughs> czar, Soviet leader, or Russian Federation leader is allowed to normalize relations between the U.S. and Russia. The penalty is death or political sabotage. And Russiagate is the prime example. Why are we in a war forever for, for, forever for peace? Why do we have 900 bases? Secret war, 15,000 nukes, et cetera, et cetera. The answer is competition over control of Eurasia. Uh, Halford Mackinder is a ge was a geographer 115 years ago, gave a speech in London, uh, and he presented a theory about control of the Eurasian continent. <coughs> Let's see. Why is NATO expanding out of North Atlantic to Brazil? Uh, and it goes back to Cecil Rhodes, uh, who was the creator of South Africa, uh, and he and some people close to him, all of whom were wealthy, <coughs> planned to have a world government controlled by the Five Eyes or the English-speaking peoples, because no one else is able to do that because they are uber over everyone. And one more thing about secrecy. Secrecy is to democracy as the HIV virus is to the immune system. Remember that. Secrecy is to democracy as the HIV virus is to the immune system. So let me sit down here and just get, I can see this better because I have a document to go through. To start out with the beginning of the U.S., <coughs> As before the U.S. had won the Revolutionary War, the British went to Catherine the Great and asked to buy some uh, Cossack mercenaries to help them kill the terrorists in their colonies. That's the wor word they use, terrorists. Uh, and she said, no, I don't think we should do that. We shouldn't, go halfway, we, we shouldn't go halfway around the world to send our people to... Uh, America to fight Americans, because they'd always been friends. Uh, so she said no. During the War of 1812, uh, the U.S. was on the mat. The White House was burned down, uh, and Britain was ready to go in for the kill. However, the Russian fleet apparently was out in the uh, Atlantic and watching what was going on, and they communicated with the British government and said, if you try and destroy America, you will find yourself at war with us, Russia, the Russian Empire. Uh, so that was that. Nicholas I, who took over from Alexander I, uh, he was a czar from the mid-1820s uh, until he died suddenly in mid 1850s, after the Crimean War, which was basically the French and the British trying to take Crimea, which is what happened in 1914. Uh, and <clears throat> the U.S. tried to take Crimea so they could put missiles on the Sevastopol missile ba or, uh, naval base to attack Russia. That's why we went into Ukraine. Nicholas died suddenly after the Crimean War, and, and I find that suspicious. I don't know why he died. It was pretty sudden. Uh, and the history of British and French wars and a sabotage of Russia 
That makes me suspicious as to why. Alexander II, the liberator, was a great friend of uh, Lincoln, and there's a statue of those two shaking hands in Moscow that I want to see today. <coughs> uh, Lincoln saved Lincoln, I mean, uh, Tsar Alexander saved Lincoln during the Civil War. He sent his Baltic fleet to the East Coast, his Vladivostok fleet to the West Coast. Uh, in 1863, in the fall, when the U.S. was uh, on the uh, uh, when the North was on the ropes, that saved the Civil War for Lincoln. He sent uh, Lincoln sent the his ambassador to Russia was Cassius Marcellus Clay of Kentucky, who was the great great grandfather of the greatest boxer in history. <clears throat> After Lincoln was assassinated in 1865, uh, Russian liberals began a series of assassination attempts on Alexander II. There were eight of them. It took from 1865 until 1881 for them to succeed. Uh, it was done in a double tap type uh, assassination, similar to the double taps that you hear about in Iraq and Afghanistan and wherever. Uh, so he was, uh, we will see uh, where that happened. Uh, the church that spilled blood uh, is, on, uh, is on the street where he was murdered, and we'll probably see that when we get to St. Petersburg. Uh, Alexander III was assassinated with arsenic. Uh, I discovered this because I audited a Russian history course uh, in, uh, in the, uh, a, a year and a half ago after I got back from my first trip to, Ru uh, to Russia in 18, six, or 19, 2016. When we got to Alexander II, it became obvious to me that the, pre that the uh, professor was expressing a significant amount of this uh, Russophobia because the description of the czars prior to that was fairly decent. But after, when Alexander II came in, it suddenly took this shift to this Russophobic uh, bent, which is a scourge. It's been around for a thousand years. It's related to the uh, split between the Catholic and the, and the Orthodox Church. Uh, and uh, that uh, is uh, the basis of this Russophobia, which is severe. There's a book by a guy named Guy Matan called Russophobia. Uh, it's a history of it. Guy Matan, it's a, sh it's a quick read. It's about 300 pages, and it gives a, a excellent view of, of what that was. So Alexander III was talking about building this Trans-Siberian Railroad. He actually started it. It wasn't finished until the 19, middle, uh, I guess around the end of the First World War, uh, but it took that long to do, but that was not acceptable to uh, the deep state, uh, which was started, as I said, by Cecil Rhodes in Africa uh, in the mid-1800s. Uh, but he kind of skipped over the death. Uh, he, said, uh, he said he died of nephritis and kind of went on. And so I raised my hand and I said, well, you don't just die of nephritis. <laughs> you get it for a reason. Uh, the doctor from India, is she, is she here? Uh, I, don't, I don't see her, but she'll know uh, the answer. So I told the professor I would uh, check it out and see what, uh, uh, what the issue was. Because I knew there's only three reasons you get nephritis. And so I uh, came back, I told him, it, I think it's a toxin, but I couldn't find a toxin that, was, that seemed to be the one that did it. Uh, and I started thinking, uh, and because there were no toxins listed like that, so I came back uh, a couple days later, and it, came, it had come to me that this must be a poison. Uh, and so I tried arsenic, and that's what it was. Alexander III was assassinated with arsenic, caused his nephritis died over a space of about three months, uh, and uh, that uh, is the reason he died. 
Uh, it was done by these same people who killed his father. Uh, President McKinley is another one. I, ha I have to research that a bit further. Uh, then we come to FDR. He was uh, elected and, and, uh, and, and inaugurated in 1933. Uh, shortly after that, he recognized the Soviet Union because it had not been recognized by the U.S. government uh, at all. Uh, and so then he suffered what's called the business plot in which Prescott Bush and a bunch of Wall Street bankers and lawyers uh, tried to get Smedley, General Smedley Butler, the greatest Marine in history, to uh, take over the government, install a fascist government because the Wall Streeters had been supporting Hitler. Uh, and they were going to install a, a, a fascist government in the U.S., join with Germany and Britain, and destroy Russia. That was the plan, but it got kiboshed by Smedley Butler. Uh, then we come to JFK uh, as uh, John just went through. That's why he was murdered, for the same reason. He went through all that and the, the, the letters and so forth between him and Khrushchev. Uh, and then we had the Cuban Missile Crisis, uh, which we were saved by a Russian political officer who persuaded this captain of the submarine that was being mercilessly uh, depth charged, it was about to sink, uh, <coughs> persuaded the, ca the captain to not shoot off one of the nu nuclear missiles uh, before they went down. Uh, they had been underwater for four days. Uh, he saved our life, everyone's life. Uh, Will uh, and the two uh, young Bliss brothers wouldn't exist if it hadn't been for this Russian political officer. We would all be dead. Anyone who was old enough, or old enough to, or uh, born 1963 or before. I'm just about at the end here. Oh, Nixon. He's next. Everybody thinks that Nixon perpetrated, or was the criminal in Watergate, but that was not actually the case. There's three books you need to read to find that out. One is Silent Coup uh, by Len Kolodny, uh, The Forty Years' War uh, by Len Kolodny, uh, and then Russ Baker's book, Family of Secrets, about the Bushes. Then comes, uh, uh, so they, he was sabotaged by John Jean, uh, and Alexander Haig, they engineered everything. Uh, Dean engineered, or planned and carried out the break-in. Haig came into the White House during, during the hearings and everything, and he was the one who eased Nixon out of the White House. So that was a whole mirage. Then comes Reagan. Reagan's primary reasons for becoming president were to end the Cold War uh, and to end stagflation, which was destroying the, destroying the country's democracy. Uh, that's according to Paul Craig Roberts, his assistant tre treasury secretary. Uh, he was assass attempt an attempted assassination uh, within two months of the inauguration by the son of the man who nominated Bush for president at the, at the convention. Uh, and uh, he was saved by a miracle. Missed his heart by a fraction of an inch. He lived. He came to, then he, met, then he decided to get together with Gorbachev when he came along. They tried to, to rid the world of nuclear missiles. And the, when they, um, they almost did eliminate all nuclear weapons. When that happened, uh, they were in a room just with our translators. <laughs> Uh, when they got to that, suddenly generals rushed, U.S. generals rushed into the room and said, Mr. President, you can't do that. Now, he's the president, and he should have said, look, I'm the president. I can do what I want, but he didn't do that. Uh, and so that ended that. It took another year and a half or two years, and they finally did the INF Treaty, treaty which Trump just uh, destroyed. Uh, so the next person of course, is Trump. And he got, he's, getting, he, he's been getting the same treatment for the past three years. That's why we have Russiagate. 
it's just it's just a conspiracy theory, but it was to take him down to prevent normalization of relations between the U.S. and Russia. That's the whole thing of Russiagate. It's over now, but the boomerang is going to come back. And the results of this boomerang are going to be devastating to the people who perpetrated this tragedy because they tried to, they had a, 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 uh, uh, a conspiracy to take him down, but he was warned of it by Admiral Rogers, who was second in command in the NSA, uh, who went to uh, Trump about eight or nine days after he was uh, elected and told him, Mr. President, there is a secret plan to destroy your presidency, and it's no different from the assassination of Lincoln uh, and the assassination of JFK. Thank you, Bill. Wow. Mother Earth, give us your